I published my first newspaper illustration on July 21st, 1969. I was 17 years old. It was the day after the first moon landing. I worked as a headline writer at the daily paper in my hometown, Fulton, Missouri. The publisher did not want to put a photo of a television screen on the front page. And of course, there were no photos from space. So he wanted to know if I would draw something. Seven years later, I took the worst job you can accept in a newspaper newsroom, night copy editor. You worked until midnight, including weekends, editing other people's copy and laying out the newspaper pages. But at least the pay was low. Why did I take it? Because the editor, Frosty Landon, said the paper would also publish my drawings. I had arrived on the scene at an opportune moment, and I wanted to take advantage of it. By the 1970s, the women's section, or as some called it, the society pages of newspapers had grown passe. A new generation of readers, the baby boomers, had little interest in club news or who went to what luncheon. To attract boomer readers, the paper needed something different. That's when the daily feature section arose. Newspapers had long published so-called feature stories. The entire feature section, though, was something new. It created the demand for a feature story every day, one with broad appeal that would carry an entire section. Soon, the daily feature story, bundled with columns, puzzles, comics, and television listings, would come to be almost a fourth of the entire paper. In Roanoke, Sandra Kelly was the first editor of this new department. Confronted with this instant demand, editors and writers simply looked out the window for inspiration they would write and publish about the world around them. The two decades that followed were the best years for newspaper illustration. I published thousands of drawings in that period, at least one a day, and I held on to a few. Here are some. In the late 1970s, the baby boom generation was changing the local nightlife. This drawing illustrated an article on the many versions of Happy Hour that emerged to attract them. I don't know why I put the guy in a zoot suit, but I did. Handheld calculators had been around for a few years when the first versions of digital poker began to become popular in the 1970s. Roanoke's natural food co-op appeared in the mid-1970s and grew from there, reflecting a national trend. Before the 1980s, less than 15% of Roanoke Valley residents had college degrees. This was changing rapidly. Along with the change came the need for white-collar jobs. Talk radio revived the long dormant AM channels and put them back in competition with the FM stations that had pushed them aside. The word geek began to gain new meaning in the early 1980s. It needed translation. As more and more items became digital, everything seemed to tell you what time it was. The digital age comes hard if it enters your life in the middle. It comes easy if you are born into it. A new generation imagined itself to be more youthful as it aged. A new phrase was born. 65 is the new, well you fill in the blank. This meant that entire families could consider themselves cool. At the same time, it was recognized that you shrink as you age, and that gray hair is inevitable. But you can stay in love as you age. A trend in advertising, more and more ad plot lines made dad the foil or a fool. When Valley View Mall opened in the mid-1980s, the big box stores followed, including Toys R Us, which local mom and pop stores saw as a losing battle, which it was. By the mid-1980s, about half of grocery stores had barcode scanners. A growing trend in the 1980s, more garlic than you really needed or wanted, showed up on new dishes. Smoking bans appeared on airplanes in the 1980s. 
Within 10 years, it worked its way into the workplace. Another trend, new and gentler kinds of incarceration for white collar crime. In the 1990s, the word halfbacks entered the language as a description of northerners who moved a few states north after first moving to Florida. Although duct tape had been around for a long time, the name entered the language as the go-to fix-all in the 1990s. In the early 90s, the word consensus invaded every workplace. The idea was that ideas are better developed in a non-competitive atmosphere. It didn't work. A trend. Parents were hosting ever more elaborate birthday parties. It could be a pain in the... One thing that didn't change much, country music. Why? Because it makes you cry. Much was said about the changing roles of women in those years. The dual burdens of career and household. Boomers were having families, leaving the mom with too much to do, including the cleaning of the fridge. There were frenetic vacations. And the emergence of the female football fan. Feature stories began to dish out therapeutic advice. There was counseling on everything from marriage and child rearing to pop psychology to personal growth. Here's one on the benefits of a sunny disposition and the pursuit of happiness coping with office politics, and the humiliation of a bad performance review. Newsflash, men and women are different. That's why relationships need communication, so that you can make different lifestyles work together. Can't resist the temptation to snoop? Don't worry, it's natural. Same with diaries. It's also natural to postpone work for pleasure. If you had children, we had advice for you. In the 1990s, a new phrase entered the language, helicopter parents. Why? Because children are thought to be so vulnerable, which is why fathers are so important. Without guidance, kids can act out or overdo the clown act. Kids need help coping with the monster under the bed or adjusting to changes at school or managing homework or dealing with coaches who run up the school. There was practical advice too and plenty of it. Here just add the words how to get organized Manage a budget. Manage a budget and a marriage. Manage your taxes. Hold a yard sale. Deal with poison ivy. Find the right summer camp. Manage the college student diet. Introduce your kids to culture. Grow tomatoes and use beer. Teach kids manners. If you want people to read what you write, then write about what people talk about. People talk about the weather. This one is a relief sculpture, springtime and the birds and the bees. Even with Valentine's Day, it's everybody's least favorite month. Summertime without deodorant. Oh, 
or you can talk about health. Here's one on treating colds and fevers. You could localize any illustration just by adding the Mill Mountain Star. This one addressed the fact that the valley air is trapped by surrounding hills and was considered a haven for allergies. Oh, uh, the evils of a truck stop lifestyle. I must have illustrated a dozen stories about coffee. Sometimes it was good for you, sometimes it was bad for you. This one is on the post-caffeine slump. In order to have a day off for the staff, the newspaper pre-printed some holiday sections. This meant live photography could not be used. It became a tradition to publish Clement Moore's poem, The Night Before Christmas, on Christmas Eve. It was never a bore to illustrate. And for most of the month of December, we published The Best Places to Find a Christmas Tree. And Christmas was followed by New Year's Day. Things to do. We published an endless list. Roanoke's Festival in the Park was for many years one of the foremost art, craft, and entertainment festivals in the Mid-Atlantic, and it attracted all walks of life. Here's a review of some of the passing fashions you could see there. There was a travel history of Botetourt County. Here's one on the excuses that traffic cops hear on I-81. We invited people to send in stories about their own memories. Weddings that didn't go as planned. The first kiss. The first day of school. Boone's Mill Speed Trap. We also wanted to know their thoughts. Here's one from the 1990s on imagining the future of the Roanoke Valley. And we asked for memoirs. This illustrated an article by Ben Beagle on the Hollywood pose women used in the 40s and 50s when kissing. That lifted foot. And I told my own stories. Becoming a father. Father's Day. Halloween.
Christmas. If you can print a newspaper, you can print anything. Everything is wrong with the process. The paper is cheap and porous and has a yellow tinge. It travels through a block-long press at 70 miles per hour. Illustrations and photographs were black and white until the 1980s, but we soldiered on, and I do mean we. Over the 20-year period shown in this video, my little drawing table grew into a full-blown art department staffed by four people. I moved into new media in 1999. The rise of that new media and the decline of newspapers followed. It's been a long goodbye. I feel lucky that I was there during those 20 best years.